All right, friends, welcome back. And I don't know when this video will be released, but today let's talk all about the SLU PP332 debate. And I wanted to kind of break it down from the ground up. Um, I know the, the guerrilla chemist has kind of brought some new ideas to the table um, that has kind of changed the way that people have thought about this. And I think, you know, again, credit where credit's due. I know this has been a long time talked about thing on in subreddit communities and stuff too. I, I have people who, you know, way back when were asking me, hey, isn't the dosing a little bit low? But today, guys, I wanted to break down, you know, number one, what is the debate about? Why did the debate start? And also kind of go into what are my thoughts on it? So that being said, guys, let's dive right in. So SLU PP332 was an estrogen related receptor agonist that has gained a ton of popularity over the last year. And when it launched, a lot of these research chemical companies were launching it in micrograms, right? 100 micrograms, 200 micrograms, 300 micrograms, 400, whatever. Um, even a lot of the ones that I was uh, admittedly uh, promoting, right? So they launched it out in micrograms. That was kind of the initial uh, dose that people were doing. Now, when people dug deeper into the research, right, they said that, hey, the dosing is much higher than micrograms. This should be a product in milligrams. It shouldn't be 100 micrograms. It should be more like probably 100 milligrams. Now, the counter response to that was, well, some people take it and they can't even handle, you know, 500 micrograms. How could we give them 100 milligrams? So that being said, guys, that's kind of where the debate starts. Let's talk all about it. First, what is my experience with SLUPP332? Now, first, I want to be very clear. The data does show that SLUPP332 is dosed in, in higher dosages than the microgram dosing that we have seen. That is what the data that we have says when it's translated over to human, uh, human dosing. So that is kind of cut and dry, you know, period, end of story. Uh, but there is a little bit more nuance in the conversation, and I wanted to kind of touch on that today. Uh, but if you're purely curious about the data, that is what the data says. Again, cut and dry, end of story. Now, as someone like myself who's tried it extensively and who has talked to a lot of people who have used it and has seen a lot of people use it, I do have some thoughts I wanted to add to this, and I hope these thoughts can be helpful for you guys. Again, I'm not super biased in this conversation. Um, I think, you know, whatever is the best and safest dosage for people to use is what they should go with, and, uh, you know, that's kind of it. So, the first point I want you guys to consider is that many clients I've worked with or coaches I've talked to is that some people cannot handle high dose SLU PP332, right? I have talked to many people who have gone up to two to three milligrams and they get side effects like insomnia, they get a higher heart rate, uh, they feel anxious all day, they feel lethargic, they get a lot of these weird side effects. And that was one of the reasons why I was always skeptical to kind of jump straight to that higher, you know, dosing scheme was because there was a lot of people that I knew. And when I say a lot, you know, we're talking 10 or 15, but again, the data is so small on it, um, who could not handle the higher dosage. So when they heard people were doing 15, 20, hundred milligrams, they were like, how's that possible? I did it one milligram and I felt horrible. I felt like death. So that is something to kind of keep in mind as well. And I don't know if that is a byproduct of the, you know, some mitochondrial dysfunction they have. I do want to dig a little bit deeper into why some people cannot handle a higher dosage of SLU PP332. But again, there are a lot of anecdotes, anecdotes that I know of where people just could not handle the higher dosage and they had to go with a very kind of low dose on it. Now, the flip side is, is that there's a lot of people I know who don't respond well to SLUPP332, right? There's a lot of people who are taking 250 micrograms, 500 micrograms, and we're like, hey, dude, I felt nothing on this at all. I didn't feel good. I didn't feel warmer. I didn't get any fat loss. I got nothing from this, right? And at the time, I, I chalked it up a little bit to a responder, non-responder issue, which still might be true. But I really do think for those people, the issue might have been in the dosing, right? Maybe those people needed higher dosing. And I actually know people who have done 250 to 500 micrograms said, hey, I felt nothing. And then they start to hit the two to three uh, milligram range or even the 10 to 15 or 20 to 35 milligram range. And then they start to feel and they're like, wow, this is a whole different compound. So it's important to know too that there's some people who are the opposite. Some people are hypersensitive and some people it seems like need a lot to kind of properly feel it, right? And again, when we're talking about a compound like this, the data is still so limited. So my kind of recommendation for you guys, you know, I've seen all different cases of SLUPP332 usage, right? I've seen people make insane results on 250 micrograms, hyper responders. I've seen people have terrible side effects at 500 micrograms. I've seen people have no effects at 10 milligrams, but great effects at 50 milligrams. I've seen people use hundreds of milligrams a day and have great effects. 
it's a bit all over the place, right? So it can be a little bit overwhelming because again, in, in the beginning, it was like we're in micrograms, now we're jumping to milligrams. It was kind of like, oops, we kind of got it wrong. But I do think that there is some value in titrating your dosage, which is something that I have always preached on this channel. So if you guys take away one thing from this video today, I want you to take away that if you are someone who is curious to use SLUPP332, I highly recommend that you start low and you titrate up your dosage kind of as I did. Again, I was at 250 micrograms, I did 500, I did one milligram, two milligram, you know, three, and I kind of titrated up accordingly. And I found that I'm someone who can handle a higher dosage. And as these higher SLU concentrations come out, I am more than happy to give them a go and more than happy to give them a try and kind of report back to you guys on how I feel. I think this new higher dosing scheme of SLU will unlock a new potential and a new possibility for a lot of people. But at the same time, I do think some people are better suited to use lower dosages based on the response. But the key is, guys, is to understand your individual response is just that. It's your individual response. So as always, guys, start low, uh, titrate it up slowly. I still think SLUPP332 works very well um, in stacks. I've seen a lot of other interesting data about it helping to correct lipid levels. I've seen a lot of interesting data um, on how it's able to uh, improve uh, liver markers and kidney markers. It does a lot of cool things in the body, but there's still more that we need to learn about it. So with that being said, guys, titrate up, but titrate up cautiously, please, as these higher variants come onto the market. I cannot wait to see the increase in user anecdotal data. I definitely will be trying the higher ones and I will be reporting back to you guys on how it goes. With that being said, guys, I hope that was a good synopsis on the SLUPP332 debate and gives you guys a little bit of insight onto kind of what's going on in the world of research chemicals because I know this has been a big topic. Thank you guys. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. And until next time, I will see you guys later.